Hi guys, welcome back to this new video in the channel. Today we're gonna continue with the boots, which is one of the exercises that we were uh, working on. If you didn't see this one, uh, I believe it was on Saturday that we uploaded the new information about uh, this uh, really cool technique, which is photogrammetry. So uh, just a quick recap, I went ahead and I asked my brother for his boots and uh, I photographed the boots in a lot of different angles. It was about a hundred photographs with a really nice uh, camera. As you can see, the detail is um, quite, quite nice. It holds very, very nicely. And then we process that information through a software called Reality Capture, which is from um, the guys at Unreal or Epic Games. And uh, this is what we got. So this is not a bad model. Uh, actually, like you could use this for like 3D printing and stuff, but it's, uh, it's very noisy. There's a lot of stuff that I don't like. There's a lot of detail that's missing. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the cleanup process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna split these guys into different uh, elements. So I'm gonna go into my polygroup section. I'm just gonna say other groups. And uh, as you can see, it should give me two different colors. They're really close together, but that's it. And now I'm just gonna say subtool. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, split and the group split. Ba -ba, there we go. So by doing this, what's going to happen is now we're going to have one subtool for each, and that way we can focus on one and then on the other. Now, when I take a look at this and I take a look at the reference, one of the things that I want to make sure that we capture is the different parts of the object, because more often than not, there's going to be parts of the object that are going to be different like sections, right? Like if we were to build this thing, it, it wouldn't be made out of a single object. It's different objects and strips of leather and stuff that make up the whole thing. Certain things we can keep together and then just uh, fake it with texture, for instance, like this thing right here. Uh, but like the difference between the sole of the foot or the boot and the boot itself, that's something that I definitely, definitely want split. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna use my mask tool to mask out all of the sole right here. I hope I'm, I'm saying that correctly. Every now and then there's like English words that uh, sound like they should be like pronounced in a specific way and then you pronounce them and they're like completely different. I, I made a fool out of myself when I was at school um, for the word the bass. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but there's this thing in, in audio uh, channels and stuff. It's, uh, it's the bass, right? Or I think that's the bass. That, that's the word that I always mess up. So it's bass and bass. I think bass, like if you say bass, it's the, the music one, and if you say bass, um, is the fish, it's like a fish. <laughs> it's like a super huge fish. So I remember a, a good friend of mine, he was laughing his ass off when I uh, when I said, yeah, you're gonna drop the bass. And he's like, the what? It's like, not the bass, dude, it's the bass. And it's like, well, what's a bass? And he's like, it's a fish, like imagine you dropping the fish. <laughs> he just lost it. So yeah, there's a lot of words in the English language that unfortunately fall into that category where they sound certain ways and then you try to pronounce them and they're completely different. Ooh. So I'm gonna be very careful here that the, the closest or the easiest or the, what's the word? The cleaner I can do this, the better. Oh, go there. Cool. There we go. So now what we can say is I can go over here and say group, uh, not split, split mask points. There we go. So now the soul of the object, as you can see, is its own uh, tool and uh, the boot is its own tool. So now when we uh, dynamish, of course, uh, all of that thing is going to be filled, as you can see right there. And we need to start uh, doing a little bit of cleanup. For cleanup, one of my favorite brushes is the Trim Dynamic because it kind of removes a little bit of the like bad parts of the thing. So I'm going to be very, very gentle here. I'm gonna start like smoothing out. Uh, I really like the the, the uh, trim dynamic brush. I've, I've said this so many times because it's it's kind of like a like a bevel brush, right? So it allows me to to create some really nice clean surfaces without really destroying all of the detail that we have. Because the smooth brush, even though it might be very uh, it might be very tempting to use the smooth brush, the problem with smooth smooth brush is very destructive. It will get rid of a lot of your detail and of your forms. And the train, train dynamic averages, averages them out. So you're going to get a cleaner, cleaner effect. You guys want to hear another one of the, of the crazy words that I, <laughs> that I mispronounced? It was, this was earlier when I was uh, like a younger. Uh, but we used to play a lot of uh, Call of Duty uh, back in the day. Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 and Modern Warfare 2. And you got the titles, right? So you would be like a corporal, and then you would be like a, like a captain or a colonel, colonel, stuff like that. And then there was this one that started with an L. 
And um, I'm gonna try and write it down. It's, it's just funny. It's something like this. Something like that. I think I think that's the that's the right way to to write it. But I I don't want to say it because I'm gonna say it the wrong way first, and then I'm gonna say the the proper way. So when I was a smaller uh, or younger, I thought that it was pronounced it was pronounced um, lieutenant because that's just how I, I saw it, right? Lieutenant. And again, one time someone heard me, they were like, what, what the hell are you saying? It's like lieutenant, you know, the the like the military thingy is like it's not lieutenant, it's lieutenant. Like what, what, how how would, how do you get those sounds? Like how, how do you go go from the, those particular sets of letters to uh, Lloyd, uh, no, lieutenant? Lieutenant is the is the proper way to say it. Lou and then tenant. It makes sense, right? Like now uh, after you hear it, it's like oh yeah that makes sense. But at first like if you've never heard the word before and you just read it and you try to like get the uh, like understand it, um, I thought it was a lieutenant, no, a lieutenant, lieutenant. It sounds like loitering. <laughs> so yeah, now as you can see right here, I'm doing a little bit of uh, smoothing with my clay buildup and since there's a lot of noise, I'm also using the clay buildup to fill up all of those holes because again, taking a look at the reference, which is this one right here, here in pure ref, you can see that there's no holes, like the surface is quite quite smooth. Yes, it has a couple of like irregularities and, and wrinkles and stuff, but um, it, it doesn't have like all of this like damage effects. So it's a matter of just cleaning up all of these things a little bit. Now I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive, and as you can see, I'm definitely using some of the uh, clay buildup to, to get that, uh, that effect. Like all of these areas, let's just, just go crazy with, the, with this one. Again, we go over it with a little bit of clay buildup, and then train dynamic, and just flatten this one out. I do want to keep some irregularities on the, on the whole thing. Like I don't want this thing to be perfectly smooth, because uh, leather is not perfectly smooth. So it's fine if we have like some dimples and, and some like um, um, little like changes in the silhouette here and there. But you want to keep, especially like this big, um, big like uh, flaps here or this big elements. That's one of the things that you definitely, definitely want to keep. Because those big wrinkles, those are the things that are difficult to model, right? Uh, if you guys have uh, seen the, um, the Marvelous Designer course that I released earlier this year, that one, uh, I explained that you could actually make shoes inside of Marvelous Designer, but it's really, it's a really, really tricky process uh, because you need to give a lot of stiffness to the to the elements, to the different parts, and it, it, it doesn't make for the best uh, for the best one. So, for instance, here, like this line that I see right here, that's this one right here. So, this were these are the lines that I need to kind of rebuild. That are the actual like uh, like decoration of the of the boot, right? So there is a little bit of sculpting still. If you're a completely new like ZBrush user and you you think that you can get away with just using photogrammetry, unfortunately, you are gonna have to polish your um, your ZBrush skills because as you can see here, there is a little bit of uh, of uh, things that we need to to fix here, and, and you're gonna need to to work with your forms in a, in a nice way. For instance, in this one, I'm gonna use my clay buildup to give it a little bit of uh, like a border to this thing. And that's gonna help me separate this from the from the lower part of the boot. As you can see, this boot's getting uh, cleaner and cleaner. You can see this whole surface here; it's very smooth. We have a lot of noise here, so let's just again use our clay buildup to to fill a little bit of this noise. Train dynamic as well. Again, what I like about the train dynamics is that's gonna it's not gonna delete all of the form. It's gonna keep some of the wrinkles and some of the, like the divots and stuff. Uh, and then when we go over with smooth again, it's gonna give us a a little bit of a nicer result. There we go. Let's fill this in a little bit more. And that's it. The boot's getting cleaner. Now if we go to the sole, which is very, very important as well. It's dynamic as well. Uh, this one's supposed to be a little bit harder, right? It's supposed to be a little bit more hard surfacey. So I'm gonna start with my trim dynamic back here. And the first thing is I'm gonna uh, like create a nice transition here on the on the front of the boot, where it goes into the into the bottom part. And all of this noise, I want to get rid of it because I know that all of this material that I'm seeing right here, I know I can recover that using um, a texture inside of uh, Substance Painter. Uh, which, by the way, I know a lot of people. Well, a couple of comments on the last one mentioned that you want to see the full process. So we're going to be having this one as, a, as our active project now. We still have the the helmet. I'm, I think I'm going to be focusing on the helmet a little bit more this uh, week because uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out on the um, 
on the Friday, on this upcoming Friday, Friday the 29th of uh, July, and I kind of want to do that in honor of the or to the game, right? So I think there we lost a little bit of the of the sharpness, so we need to be very careful. Trend dynamic again is really good, but it's also very aggressive. So sometimes we can lose a little bit. Let's turn on the boot. This is important because I do want to see how this thing kind of like merges with the with the boot. There we go. And the important here, the important part here is that because eventually, if, if we're gonna bring this into Unreal, uh, we guy or you all of you guys know that um, you can't just bring a 124.8 million like polygons into Unreal. If we want to use Nanite, then yes, we can do that. But uh, if we're going to be using this for a character that's going to be moving and it's going to be deforming, uh, Nanite's not compatible with deformations uh, yet. Maybe in the future it will be. So yeah, that's one of the things that we need to be careful about. Now, for instance, here, see, see this? Uh, see how far away we're from the from the border of the boot? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my clay buildup to remove some of this, to kind of create like a little bit of a hollow element. And then I'm going to go to the boot and with my move brush, I'm just gonna move that boot further out. Because when we did the uh, split mask points, we did lose a little bit of this sort of effect. So it's perfectly fine to, to just bring it back. Same here, for instance, on the heel, and just bring it back, and that's gonna give us a, a better result. Again, let's jump back here. Let's just our train dynamic again. Land this a little bit more. There we go. Now, here's uh, one tool that I'm gonna show you, and that's this part right here. So as you can see, we have this elements right here. I am gonna use my uh, control shift, and I'm gonna change this to my uh, knife, uh, knife brush, knife curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up. Or actually, I'm gonna start over here. And we're gonna double tap and go down, and that's gonna remove that element. See that? So we just created the cut on the on the sole of the foot. And again, we can use our trim dynamic to just like flatten this out a little bit more. If we want to get like the perfect sole, um, we would need to definitely like retopologize this, which we can do, by the way. Like we can just give it a very nice clean retopology but i kind of like to have a uh, like a little bit of damage on my on my stuff it looks worn it looks interesting so some of the rubber from the boot could have been damaged with use so we cannot really think about that sort of stuff here as you can see that looks pretty pretty good now how clean we want this to be will of course depend on the the amount of time that we're uh, going to be investing Right now, I feel like this is a, a good amount of time, and we're getting a good result. Okay, let's go there. Now, I do see on the reference that there's like a stitching line uh, going across the, the sole. Again, we can recover that one later. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Let's go to the boot. Let's give a little bit more volume. Let's create the a very nice overlap because that overlap is what we're going to be baking into a, a low poly mesh later on and that's what's going to give the boot a super super cool realistic look now uh there's still a little bit of work to do but i, want, I don't want to bore you guys with the details i just want to show you one more technique here that i think is going to be uh really really cool and again this is to create that very like nice realistic sort of look for the whole thing well there's two techniques i actually want to show you First of all, this one right here. As you can see, there's a big, big, big mess uh, of like a mass over here, and uh, we need to find a way to, to eliminate this. Uh, easiest one, I would say, is uh, definitely trim dynamic. So if we just push this down, since we're working with Dynamesh, we can just Dynamesh real quick, and as you can see, that's gonna disappear. And uh, that's fine, I mean, we can leave this sort of like a concave or, or, or yeah, concave like surface on the, on the inside of the boot. Um, and then when we do retopology, we just like create like a little bit of a ledge going in and then we just stop because we would expect there to be some sort of pants or something uh, covering the rest of the boot. But one of the things that I saw with the boots right here where this flaps on the outside, like this guy right here. 
and as you can see, it's a really clean flap of uh, leather that goes around. So uh, it's not ideal for me to just like keep it like this. Like, of course we can use our Damien standard here and just create like a line to indicate that that thing is there. But as you can see, it, it just looks like clay. And, and that's one of the things where where a lot of people will stop and they will not take the time to to polish their their uh, elements their uh, their work and that's just gonna create a, a really really weak uh, piece so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go with my uh, mask pen and I'm gonna mask out that section there I'm gonna ignore the little flap that's going down I'm just gonna mask this like thing right here and we definitely want to grab the inside here There we go, and let's cut there a little bit to clean the shape a little bit more. That's it. Now, some of you might think, oh, he's going to extract this. Yes, I am going to extract them, but I'm not going to extract it in the usual way. I, I'm actually going to um, duplicate this. So, uh, oh, in this case, yeah, we're going to extract. We're going to say extract, and it's going to be uh, with zero thickness. We've done this trick before. We're just going to hit accept, and there we go. So now what we have is this. A piece right here now we need to polish this because it looks super horrible so i'm going to use my knife tool to polish the borders right here let's polish this border here and this border here. there we go so now we have this super interesting like shape uh what we're going to do here is we're going to dynamish with a high resolution so let's try like 1024 again Dynamish, so we get something really clean. We even smooth it out a little bit and stuff. And then we're gonna see remesh. So we're gonna go geometry, see remesh, and see remesh. Uh, errors. Okay. So the problem here is that uh, there might be some like weird stuff or super thin stuff. There we go. That's the those holes that we see there. That those were causing. Might have a little bit of that over here. That when two faces are sharing the same edge, we get something called a non-manifold geometry, and it freaks a lot of uh, a lot of softwares. So there we go. Now with this, now as you can see, if we go back to to the original boot, now we have a cleaner shape that represents what we want to do. So we get rid of this one, and uh, this one we can of course like tweak it and modify it a little bit. Like for instance, with my move brush, I'm just gonna move it down. And this is gonna look way, way, way better. Now we go back to the original boot. And this original mask, you don't need to hide everything, but just like get rid, like kind of like clean up some of the the effects that we might have because we're now replacing it with this new element right here. So let's go back here, get move brush, just push this around. Again, if we want to be even cleaner, we could have gone to uh, like a Maya or Blender and retopologize this whole thing. Let's just push this thing there. Again, creating the overlap, and this overlap is going to look way, way better on the uh, on the final bake than what we had before. Now we still have this little uh, like arrow thingy or this extra thingy right here. And we would need to use uh, the same process, right? So we need to find uh, the shape, or as I'm going to show you in just a second, what happened? Oh, the intensity. Let's clean all of this. So again, if we take a look at the reference, you're going to see that we have another huge band, like coming in the pretty much the exact same uh, direction as this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this one. Let's uh, center the pivot point. Let's make it thinner, a little bit fatter, bring it up, something like this. And now it's just a matter of pushing it back. Let's push it out so we get the nice, nice border. You can see it's very like fat and weird. Right now it looks very, very ugly. But what we can do is again with the trim dynamic. Flatten this whole thing. And uh, that's basically what we're doing. We're using the the basic uh, shape that we had on the on the boot 
to rebuild what we originally had. It goes quite low, right? So it goes like about there. Now we can again use our, our knife brush and cut some of like the sharp corners that it had, something like that. And then with our trim dynamic, as you can see, it's not really rough. Just smooth out. Very important. This is all something that I always mention on my on my videos. Try to get rid of any like floating space. So if you can make it so that objects touch the bottom part, even if there's overlap there, it doesn't matter. It's a super simple area. But this is gonna make your bake so much easier. Because whenever you have floating stuff, there's gonna be like extra projections from your normal maps and, and they will look uh, slightly weird. And that's it. That's uh that's pretty much um that's pretty much the, the cleanup process, guys. So as I mentioned, we're probably gonna jump back to the helmet on the next couple of days. Uh, when I finish the the high poly, low poly textures, let's see if we can finish it by the by the end of the week, and um, and then we'll come back to this one. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna see if we can get a one of our live streams. We haven't done a live stream. Maybe on the live stream we can continue on the boot uh, this week again. I've been flooded with work uh, over here at the studio with the classes and everything. It's been really really difficult to keep up with um, as as frequent videos as I I wanted to. Right now, for instance, it's early early Sunday. And I'm recording this uh, while uh, my family is still sleeping to uh, to get some um, some work done. Right. So so yeah, let me let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what else would you like to learn about. Uh, there's been a lot of cool courses uh, released in the last couple of days. Uh, we have the hair. We uh, the the no sorry not the hair is the realistic anatomy for uh, for creatures. We have the realistic uh, character in Blender. We had the cinematic lightning uh, for Maya. So. We're, we're working really, really hard here at the Nextit family to, to get you guys as much uh, cool content as possible. Uh, thank you very much for the support, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.